Hi, it's good to have you with us as we continue to walk through Mark's Gospel. We've now got as far as chapter 8, and today we're going to look at verses 1 through 21. As usual, in the video description, there's a link to an online Bible so you can read the passage for yourself. Over the last couple of years, I've been teaching my daughter to ride her bike without stabilizers. Now, it didn't take her that long. It's just that there was always a big gap between the times that I could take her out. We began with some laps of our church car park, a big open space with no obstacles. Within minutes, she was whizzing round and round while I was panting and puffing, trying to keep up. The next step was a few trips to the green wheel, the local cycle path. To begin with, she kept on veering off to the left or to the right. And I had to keep guiding her back to the centre of the path. But then came the wobble that I missed. She shot to the left and straight into a patch of stinging nettles. It was the best thing that could have happened. Not in the short term. I could see that she was hurting, no matter how much she tried to hide it and how determined she was not to cry. But long term, she learned a lesson. After that, she made sure she kept the bike straight. When we make mistakes, it's important that we learn from them. Yet our own mistakes are not the only ones we can learn from. We can also learn from the mistakes of others. That's what Jesus wants us to do here in this passage. In verse 15, he says to the disciples, Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. What's he saying there? Well, essentially, he's saying to his disciples, don't make the mistake they've made. Don't follow them down the path they're walking. OK, so what's this great error that the Pharisees and Herod are making? To answer that, we need to look at verses 11 to 13. Here, the Pharisees come to Jesus with a whole series of questions, and they end up asking him for a sign from heaven. In effect, a miracle. Now, why are they doing this? Mark tells us that they did it to test Jesus. You see, Jesus was claiming to be someone who had been sent by God. He was claiming to be God's king and teaching God's truth. OK, the Pharisees say. If that's the case, prove it. Do something that shows us beyond a doubt that you are who you say you are. Well, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus reply? Mark tells us. He sighed deeply and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given it. And then after he said that, he just upped and left. Now, you may be asking yourself, couldn't he have done a great miracle and put a stop to their doubt there and then? Well, yes, he could. So why didn't he? I think there's two reasons. First, Jesus is not a circus performer whose job it is to entertain people. He didn't come to perform miracles on cue. Then second, it didn't matter how impressive the miracle was. These people still wouldn't have believed what he said. You have to remember, Jesus has already performed countless signs that demonstrate that he has come from God. Yet the Pharisees don't believe it. The problem is not in the lack of evidence. The problem is their hardness of heart and refusal to believe. This is the mistake Jesus warns his disciples about. Don't follow them down that path, he says. Don't fail to see what I'm doing and take note of what it means. It might surprise you that the disciples needed to be told this. They travelled around with Jesus day in and day out. They'd seen so much. They'd been with him on the lake when he calmed the storm and when he walked on water. They'd been there when he fed 5,000 plus people from a simple pat lunch. They'd seen him heal and drive out evil spirits. Over and over again, they'd seen signs that showed that Jesus had been sent by God, was speaking God's truth and quite simply is incredible. Yet the reality is they still doubted and they still hadn't put the puzzle together in their minds and hearts. This passage gives us two examples of this. In verses 1 to 13, we have an incident where Jesus fed 4,000 plus people from seven loaves of bread and a few small fish. In verse 2, Jesus points out that the people are hungry and need to be fed. The disciples look around them and see just wilderness. And in verse 4, they reply, 
But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? Did they not remember the feeding of the 5,000? They did. Verse 19 shows us that. They just hadn't got it yet. It hadn't sunk in. Their view of Jesus wasn't being transformed by what they were seeing. We see the same thing in verse 16. After Jesus tells them to beware of the Pharisees' mistake, Mark tells us, They discussed this with one another and said, It is because we have no bread. At the mention of yeast, their minds immediately go to bread, and they start worrying about whether they have enough or not. Jesus speaks to them firmly, not about their lack of foresight when they last went shopping, but about their hearts. In verses 17 and 18, he says, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? You see, the disciples had seen a lot. They'd been around Jesus and experienced firsthand so many miracles, yet they struggled to see Jesus as anything more than the man in front of them, a carpenter from Nazareth who had this uncanny ability to teach God's word. They didn't see that he is God's king. More, he is the son of God. Why is this here in Mark's gospel? It isn't here to embarrass the disciples. It's here so that we can learn from their mistake. You see, it's one thing to read through Mark's gospel and be amazed at everything that happened. It's another to let these words transform our view of Jesus and to trust that he is who he says he is. Will we see and hear, but then move on unchanged? Or will we see and hear and believe? Will we learn from their mistake? Well, that's it for today. We'll be back next week. You can catch the next episode on our YouTube channel, Facebook page, or as an Apple or Spotify podcast. Hopefully, see you next time.